Well, hey guys, welcome back to my shop. I am the Backwoods Modeler. <coughs> Today, <clears throat> I thought maybe we could build a pole barn. And I'm going to side it with some tin siding that I have over here that I made myself, which I will, will get into how I made this and how I came across this stuff. Really cool stuff. Now, um, I've already got my layout made. Um, you can see if you are wanting to do something like this. Um, I've written all the measurements out on here so that you can make your own. And I'll show you how we're going to make it together today. Um, this is probably going to be a couple of part video just because uh, it's a long video. Uh, it's going to be a long process. Um, I have already measured out all my pieces and I've already pre-cut everything and all we really need to do is glue it together but that's still going to take a little bit of time. So let's get into how we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this on some wax paper. So and what we're going to do to cheat is we're going to put our picture underneath the wax paper so you can see we can still see all of our lines. Then we take our square and we lay it right square dead on our lines because we want to make sure we keep this nice and square. So you can see we're tight on this line and tight on the floor wall or the floor piece. Now, like I said, I've already measured all this out and cut it all out. Um, my square is not long enough as for the building as you can see, but that's alright because I have a bottom plate that I'm going to put on here and that will extend out to where we need it to be sticking out a little bit far i don't like this new square i got here i'll show you the difference here i don't have my old one here i don't like this little hole they put here in the middle i understand what it's for for pivoting and stuff but when you're trying to do this small stuff with this small wood it goes in the hole so that doesn't help us much so i have another one at home that doesn't have that hole i need to bring it over here so we can use it Okay, so let me get my lines made back up. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the back wall. We'll go ahead and set our piece on there where we want it. And all the pieces that I've cut out, I've already numbered. So I know exactly where they go. So um, we're going to cheat. I'm going to use uh, some wood glue to put this together. We're just going to use regular old tight blonde, tight bond glue and I'm going to cheat what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze this into a cup because we're basically just going to glue both ends so all we need is a little bit of glue on each end so instead of having to drag out my glue bottle every single time we're going to squeeze some in a little condiment cup here and just dab the ends so we're going to start here so we're just going to dab the end, just a little bit of glue on the bottom. Start over here in the corner. And just glue those two together. Okay. Now we got that together. And again, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I've got every one of these numbered. So I know which one goes next. And I measured it out on paper already that I'm doing every four, and actually every four spots. Let me get a paper towel here to get the glue off my fingers. All right. So now we'll just keep going. Just a little dab of glue on each one. And like I said, I've already measured all these out. Do I already know how I want them? It's the line, I'm off a little bit, I can tell. Because my lines are not lining up. Okay, move this over a little bit. Alright, now we keep going to the next one. I measured it every four lines, so after every four lines oh actually no nope, that's where i screwed up i forgot about this middle piece 
what I did is I forgot I needed a center support piece in there, and I forgot to put that in there. So that's why these center ones are not going are going to look kind of funny because of the way I had to do that. This goes over here. And then we're going to put another piece on here, which will straighten out the tops. So we're not real worried about the tops not being exactly square just yet, because we're going to put a top rail on here, which is going to fix all of that. Now these last two here, this barn is going to have a lean-to on it. So these last two are spaced further apart than the other ones because they are going to be outside. This number seven here is going to be the end wall of the building itself. And then the rest of this is all going to be lean-to. So, now let me get a paintbrush. Because I didn't think this part through. I need to get glue on the ends of every one of these now. So we can glue our other top piece on. Now again, um, we're just going to wing this. We're not going to try to make every perfect, everything perfect. It is just going to be a building, and it is going to be all covered up, so no one is going to see it. So again, this is just a top cap. A couple of these we may have to slide into place. A couple of these we may have to trim, like this one. Dang it. Should have known that was going to be the case. I test fit all these, but they're not going together correctly. So, get a little more glue on this piece. Yeah, I know, I cut that off camera. Sorry, guys, I'll cut the next one out on camera. Show you the tool that I'm using to cut this with. Okay. Still a little bit tight. Hmm. Wonder why that is. So we're going to take our knife. We have to cut this high side off the back. That's our problem. For some reason, this back side is a lot higher. You think if I uh, cut all these pieces, you think I'd make sure everything fit right, wouldn't you? No, that'd have been too easy. Got to have some drama on camera, right? Okay. Still not down to where we want it. We're going to have to make a big cut off of that. So what I'm using to cut is I have one of these fancy little things. And it cuts nicely, but right now I'm getting glue all over it. Oop, I split that piece, but that's all right again. That's a piece no one's going to see. That's going to be in the top, up by the roof, underneath of our top rail so nobody's going to see that see if I can get this in here right this time okay there we go better there we go now we're better in place okay need to straighten this guy up now let's get some glue on these other ones I guess before we do that, make sure everything's going to fit. See, I screwed this piece up already. It's not right where it's supposed to be. It should be right there. It's all right. We're going to fix that. A little bit of persuasion. We're using the wax paper, if I haven't said it, because the most glues don't stick very well to wax paper. So you can usually peel it off of there pretty easily. That piece is too long, but that's okay. We'll cut it when we're done. I don't like that piece, but there's not much I can do about it now. It's got to deal with it. Don't tell anybody that piece is crooked. All right, guys and girls, so that's what we're doing. That's what we've done. That's our back wall. Oh, got to get some of these down here so they dry. 
push this over a little bit. Maybe it'll make better contact. So now I got it set in my square. Everything is trying to dry. It's got to make sure everything's nice and square. So now what we do, we pick up our pieces for our front wall. And we're just going to slide this baby straight back out of the way. Now, that can set there and dry. We'll put this underneath of our other piece. Pull our square back. Make sure we don't have any glue on that because we don't want to glue this to our other pieces. Now, now we're going to build the front wall. I'm going to attempt to try to speed some of this up later, guys, but I don't know if that's going to work, so bear with me. So now we got the front wall set. As you can see, I already got a garage door set in there, and it's going to be the same way as the other one. So all we have to do here is set our pieces up and start laying them out. Whoop, let me get the bottom piece on first. I'm using the paintbrush, and remember what I said? I was just going to dip them in there. Set this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Like I said, I already got them numbered, and the best way to do it is you put them right back the way you put it. You numbered them. So you numbered them on the top, so the top is the way it goes. It takes all the confusion out of it. Now I've got these set... Like I said, every four lines. This is for the top of my door. Which will go right there. And this one is for the other side of the door. Which will go right there. Then I have a small piece for the top. Goes right there. Then my next piece goes here at the end of the building. And then the next piece is going to be halfway there, between there, because this is going to be where the lean to is. And hopefully, I took a picture of this and put it on the thumbnail so you can have an idea of what we're building here so there's that wall now this is the easier one now again like I said I have not put in any windows and doors yet we're still going to cut those in I'm not exactly sure where they're going to be so that's why I haven't put them in yet this video idea was kind of a last minute deal I wasn't going to originally film this, but I thought I would show you because there's going to be some processes on here that I've never done before that I found from people on the internet here, and they are really cool, so we're going to try them out. Okay, so there's that one, and there's this one. That one's a little short, isn't it? Hmm. They seem to fit earlier. It's okay. The glue will bridge the gap. All right, so I'm just trying to line all this up, guys. That's the hardest part is you want to make sure everything is lined up perfectly before it the glue dries. Because if not, you're going to have a world of problems later. We don't like problems. Okay. So just about got this wall set. Okay. So there is the front wall. Let's move a couple things around here. All right. So that is basically our front wall, y'all. Now that one just needs to dry. Now let's slide my glue and everything out of the way. So we can slide this piece back. Okay, 
Just slide it straight back. Let it sit there and dry. Okay. Now, we got sidewalls to build. Now, the only difference between this and the sidewall is I need to mark my 10 and a half inch mark because that's as long as I want the wall. The wall has been measured out to be um, 10 and a half on the inside. And the reason for the measurement, 10 and a half, is because um, my gooseneck trailer is 8 inches long. So I wanted to be able to put my gooseneck trailer in the garage and still have a little bit of room. You know, I like to play with my car, so I want a little room to back the truck in there and drop the trailer off. So that's why we are at 10 and a half on the inside. By the time it's all over and done with, it will be 11 inches deep because we're, the way we're going to build it, and I'll show you that as we go i just smack my light all right so now the back wall is pretty easy um it's just as simple as lining it up and putting it on there um, i measured it out again to be every four lines on my paper and I'm, that i'm about to glue it to <laughs> let me get this under here Again, I don't necessarily need this template here under here now. I'm just using it to mark my 10 and a half inch mark right here. So, like I said, this one's going to be a little easier. We're going to double dip these. Get the glue back over here. It's going to dip both ends this time. Plop the first one down on there. And every four lines, we'll try to put one. One, two, three, four. Again, this is a pretty good distance apart if you were building this in real life. They wouldn't be so far apart. And the posts that I'm using are a little bit big. I know that. Technically, they would be about 12 inches wide because I'm using quarter inch basswood so the walls would be made out of 12 inch posts and I know that's a little bit big but that's all I have to use today fellows ladies and gentlemen so we're using what we got not enough glue on that one okay again this is the back wall so we're just trying to make it look uni universal or not universal but making it look symmetrical how's that now these I've already cut so these should all be perfect in line just want to straighten them up a little bit so that they dry nice and straight okay so there's that wall now again I'm building these walls a little bit differently. Um, one wall is going to be two and a half inches tall. The other wall is going to be two and three quarter inches tall. And the reason being is because of the way the roof is sloped. So that's why that is. Now, this one's done. This is just one of our side walls. So let that get that out of the way. Let that dry. All right, guys, last of the walls. Get this on here. Holy cow, 19 minutes already. I'm going to try to speed this up, like I said, but I don't know how well I can do that. All righty. There. It's my bottom plate, the top plate, and there's all the beams I guess you could call them tap this in here tell you this makes it a lot easier guys and gals when you pre-cut everything 
because that takes a lot of the a lot of time out of it. Again, this is going to be just like the other one. I don't have to have these exactly perfect. We just want them about every four lines apart. Seen a kid build one on the internet this morning. He's the one that gave me the idea to do this. I wish I'd have got his name, but I didn't. But I tell you, it blew me away how fast he knocked that out. Young kid, too. I'll have to find out his name and share that with you. Because this is not my idea. I got this idea, like I said, from a kid I saw on the internet. And then also a guy who showed me how to do um, the corrugated metal, which I think is really slick. I think you guys are going to like that too. And that's going to be in the next part of this video because now we are at the point we just have to let this stuff dry. So, all right, everything's set, square. Everything just has to dry now. And after it dries, I'll be back and we'll start putting this together. I would tell you this is wood glue. Don't be in a hurry for this stuff to dry because it takes a good old time. So this is probably going to be another day project that I will come get back with you tomorrow. So hopefully y'all come back. All right, y'all. So kick my camera stand right off the bat. Um, it's been actually a couple of days now. Um, <clears throat> still been having some problems with the uh, roof leaking. So um, actually had to get them in here and re-roofed the back of this house because the patching just wasn't working. So this has had plenty of time to dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start putting it together. Um, so this obviously is going to be the front and this will be the back. And I put my marks on the wrong side of the wall. So I'm going to end up having to remark the back wall. Not a big deal. So like I said before, I got one wall taller than the other one. Let's slide this back some. And that was because of the way the roof was, line was laying out. So that is about what we're going to be like, ladies and gentlemen. If I, don't quit knocking, if I can quit knocking these walls over. And I got this one on the inside turned around. All right, what I did is I already made my lines... I don't know if you can make them out. I've got three different lines here for where the supports for the nailer boards on the outside are going to be. So there's that. I'm just going to start gluing together, y'all, because it's obviously not going to stay together. So, All right, so that's basically what we're going to do. Let me back my chair up so I can get over here. Because I actually have to stand up for this one. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue cup here. We're going to get some glue out, and we're going to paint the back side of this really good. I probably could have just used a glue bottle for this. So I'm going to put a real good bead of glue on this because this is going to be a, an important glue joint. All right. Now we'll flip it over here so we can get the other side. I don't know if I'm in the view of the camera or not, y'all, because I am standing above it instead of sitting behind it like I normally do. All right, so now we got that one. We got plenty of glue on both sides. Put our paintbrush down here. Somewhere it's not going to fall over. Now we just want to stick these two ends together. And then put this up and stick this into the other side. All right. So there we go. There's one wall. Now let's get some glue on this other one.
all this room I got here, y'all, and I'm still having problems trying to film this stuff. And I'm probably not in camera, and I apologize for that. Because, again, I can't see. I always see how these other people do these. And I always wonder how they make sure they're in the view of the camera every single time. Because I just can't seem to pull that off. Okay. Okay. Now let's get this wall in. Touch it to this stud where it's going to be there. Touch it to this one where it's going to be there. Line everything up. And then I forgot to grab a square. Because it's important to make sure that our building stays square here. Okay. All right, everything's nice and tight, everything looks nice and straight. Again, like I said, this is the part that takes the longest, is getting everything set exactly the way you want it to make sure that the building is nice and square and straight. Once you get that point to that point, that's half the battle right there, ladies and gentlemen. I know I keep moving around here, but I'm trying to make sure that everything is making contact. Okay, everything's looking good there. So, I'm going to let this dry overnight, and then tomorrow morning, we will come in and we will start putting the nailers on the sides. And then we will start getting the siding going. That is the going to be hopefully the most exciting part here and I really hope this turns out good because I've never done it before so all right guys uh this is going to be the end of part one we'll start part two uh tomorrow morning we'll start getting the uh nailers on start getting siding on get the roof on uh, I'm not sure how I want to do this I don't know if I want to do a half a roof or if I want to do removable roof we all we still got to figure all that out so y'all come back uh don't forget to check me out on instagram check me out on ebay and y'all have a good day now bye